Well, get ready to see yourself as you really are. To see yourself as you really are. You're fine, fierce, and fabulous. If you saw that title in the bulletin today and in that affirmation, that's exactly what you are. So say it with me. I am fine, fierce, and fabulous. Once again, I am fine, fierce, and fabulous. There we go. You are already catching on to what the very Spirit of God intends for us. To understand you're fine, you're fierce, you are fabulous. Sometimes we have a hard time agreeing with that and it becomes a little bit of a, one of those Pollyanna, progressive, positive catchphrases that people want to throw out all the time. Do you really believe it? Quite often, you may look into the mirror and you go look, oh, today I don't look so fine. Mm, I'm not feeling so fierce. I'm not really embracing the sense of being fabulous because the physical mirror will play back to us that which we see in the senses and we're caught up in the sense of limitation that's there, limited to just what we see in this moment, limited to the physical body that we are. And then there's the opportunity to see yourself as God sees you. To see through spiritual eyes the unlimited possibilities that are there. The possibilities that see and uh, that unfold, I should say, and invite you to see just how fine, how fierce, and how fabulous you are. Because when we begin to embrace that, we begin to understand that the spiritual outlook is ever taking us higher and higher, ever taking us from this place to a higher plane, taking us to our highest and best. So this is the journey that we have with God. Oh, I tell you, I've encountered so many people who want to say to me, I don't know if I can believe that. You know, I feel suffering. I feel that God wants us to be uh, martyrs. I feel that the holy and holy and the great saints of this world are those who really lived in poverty and struggled. I think we're honored and we celebrate those great saints of ancient times who just saw the limitation of their world and grinned and bared it and lived through it. I want to say to this that we have somehow lost sight of the very intent of Scripture. How many of you believe in the Bible? How many of you believe that the Bible is there for us, for our truth? It is. It's a wonderful book that's giving us guidance as to how to move to our highest and best. So if you're struggling with the understanding that God is ever moving you in the journey of prosperity upward in blessing, well, let's take a look. John chapter 15 verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, whatever you wish, and it will be done unto you. Simply ask. Now, that's blessing and prosperity, isn't it? Taking you higher and higher. This is the very promise of God unfolding for us. How about Proverbs 3, 6? In all your ways acknowledge God, and God will make straight, clear, effortless your paths, is what it's saying. Now that's blessing and prosperity, isn't it? And then how about Joshua 3, 5? Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now that's speaking of blessing and prosperity. Now, this is the struggle because not very many of us grew up in that kind of consciousness, that way of thinking. We didn't grow up necessarily in churches and environments that always invited us to think we're fine, fierce, and fabulous. We were welcomed into a belief and a journey spiritually that says, you are sinful, you are bad, you are imperfect. You are in need of uh, a great sense of guilt and shame for who you are and how you live your life. And so we've embraced some of those things that society and cultures and churches and traditions and religions have imparted on us. That we feel guilty about a lot of stuff. And some days we don't really feel very fine. We feel extremely unworthy. And that God-given fierceness has slipped away from us. And we don't feel like we have that power and strength within our lives to be at our very highest and best. So when you see yourself through the spiritual eyes, when you see yourself as God sees you, when you begin to look in that spiritual reflection, you find that seeing is believing. Oh, no. Believing is seeing. Believing is seeing how fine, fierce, and fabulous you are. 
That's the very intention that God has laid out for you in the journey of your day-to-day living. Going out this week, it's about us every day awakening the, th- the thought that when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I say, I'm fine, I'm fierce, and I'm fabulous, and I'm moving out into the world with that kind of power and strength. Wow, I believe if you did that, you would be truly living out the powerful message of truth that's found within ancient scripture that's been passed down but often overlooked set aside put aside because many of the churches said oh let's not get big-headed and think that you have any kind of power within you the power is not within you the power is up in heaven in the big sky by and by removed and away from you and yet we find that in thought in very conflict when Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is here and now within you The power and presence of the divine is within you. There is no separation. There is no division. So we understand that very teaching that all of this wonderful, the wonderful blessings of God's intention of prosperity for our lives is there for us to move us daily higher and higher to our highest and best. So maybe what we have to do is start to put a greater value on ourselves revalue ourselves begin to look at ourselves in a whole new way rather than that unworthy being that one that is uh, a worm such as I as we may sing in some hymns of the past that that concept that we are truly uh, something that is not a gift from God but that is maybe an abomination as some scriptures have tried to quote for our lifestyles or who we are So knowing this, we have to put a greater value in ourselves. And Spirit of God has spoken down through the ages over and over on this very lesson that sound and seen very profoundly in the book of Numbers, in the passage that you read in our scripture lesson today. It's a story of the children of Israel coming to the edge of the promised land with great expectation. Now, mind you, they had wandered in the wilderness for years. They had left their bondage in Egypt, liberated and set free, but then in their fears and doubts, they began to wander, and now there's a chance for them to come into the areas of this promised land, and they send the spies in to go and investigate to prepare for the passageway of coming into claiming this promised land that God had offered them all along. And as they send the spies, they're waiting in anticipation. What will the report be? What's it look like in there? What will be like in the the wonderful blessings and prosperities that are promised for us? What is is it going to be like? And you can imagine their hearts and lives filled with great hope, waiting to hear the report. And suddenly the spies come back. And I can imagine the children of Israel gathering in this great gathering to hear the great reports. What about this land of milk and honey and blessing? only to find that one of the first things they say is that text today, there were giants in the land and we were in our own sight seen as grasshoppers. Giants and grasshoppers. You can see the text begins to unfold for us a spiritual lesson. The first thing that happened was they saw themselves as small as grasshoppers And secondly, they assumed everyone else, being a giant, saw them as grasshoppers. Too often in our life, we may think that how we see ourselves is the way others may see us. And for us to really live out our blessing, we must first see ourselves as fine, fierce, and fabulous. Because if we don't, quite often we don't project that kind of message. And then we assume everyone else doesn't think you're that fine. You're fierce. Or you're that fabulous. So it is that this lesson is teaching us that we must first embrace how we think about our lives. My life was changed when I began to think that that those things I thought over and over again were greater. They were giants in my life. They were greater than the power and presence of God. How silly. Isn't that strange? But we do. We think that way. We think, oh, this financial challenge is greater and the power and presence of God. That's why I'm sweating it. I'm worried. I'm stressed. I'm fearful. This health challenge is greater than the power and presence of God. 
And that's why I am troubled by it and weak and weary in the midst of this. You may be saying, oh, this great uh, challenge I'm going through that's facing me, it seems like a roadblock to any kind of blessing because it is bigger and bigger and bigger and I see it as a giant and I see the power and presence of God in me as a grasshopper, small. You see how important it is when we understand that the true nature of God within you is oh, oh, oh. I've shared it before. I'm going to teach it again. Oh, oh, oh. What are those O's? We understand that the power is omnipotence. We understand that the presence is omnipresence. We know that the all-knowing wisdom of God dwells within us as omniscient. Oh, oh, oh. Three O's. If you get those down, you understand the very nature of God. When you look at God and you feel the presence of God, you just got to say, oh, oh, oh. It's just simply that. It's just, oh, oh, oh. And you understand the very nature of God because God's very power is omnipotent. It is a power that is greater than any other. It is the only one power and all else is non-existence in that wonderful understanding. That omnipresence says that that power is with you at all times, never, ever leaving nor forsaking you. Okay, this is a spiritual principle in your life that that presence is with you. So where those who would tell you that somewhere in your journey of your spiritual life or your journey in the afterlife that the presence of God is going to leave you, that would be in direct conflict with the very principle and nature of God. I'll never leave you nor forsake you, ever. So there's never going to be a moment in all of our eternal living that the, the presence of God would ever leave us. It's not possible when we understand, oh, oh, oh. And lastly, the all-knowing wisdom of God dwells within us. So when we are lacking wisdom and understanding where to go and what to do, we just simply rest and allow that wisdom to rise and flow through our hearts and our lives. In this, we know the true nature of God. We know who and what is within us. We have to simply get on board. Get on board. Get on board. Because you know what? How how many of you have taken a flight and you've been sitting in the lounge, uh, the departure lounge, and maybe amused and by maybe what's going on on your cell phone or your laptop or your pad. You, You know, you're caught up in the technology or you're in conversation and you didn't realize that the flight is about to take off and everybody else is boarding and you didn't get on board. Have anybody missed a flight? Anybody missed a mode of transportation, whether it be a train ride, a plane ride, or a boat? You know, years ago, I was in Greece, and uh, I was shopping, and I thought, you know, the boat's going to take off at 1.15. I know they really mean, they really mean 1.30, because they just want everybody early, you know. I got time for one more t-shirt shop. You know, you're as a tourist, you go shopping, you go all these, t- and you get closer to the boat and the t-shirt shops get to be bigger and better, right? And you want to make sure you got that last minute bargain. You got that great t-shirt that says, I've been to Greece, and you got to take a bunch of those home, you know, with you. Well, I just thought one more t-shirt shop, and then all of a sudden I hear this, boom, boom, you know, it's the ship, and there's the gangplank going up, and it's taking off, and I'm on this Greek cruise, and now I'm stuck on this island, and I'm like, there is, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, the message was, Paul, get on board, okay? I somehow missed that, and I got left behind. Fortunately, there was a wonderful vehicle of that could speed by, and uh, it was a hovercraft that I could pay $75 extra for, and I fly, and I arrived at my next island before the cruise ship did, and I was there having coffee on the deck side, and just as they were pulling up and waving to all my friends who, I had missed that last leg of that cruise. My point is this, you got to get on board. What we've got to get on board is this consciousness of the, oh, 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 we're not grasshoppers. There are no giants. God knows no size. For the power and presence of God is at work at all moments in our life, no matter what the circumstances are. But when we continually see ourselves as limited, and we continue to see ourselves in circumstances as somehow small and the problem so great, we are diminishing the very nature of God at work within us. So here's it important that we take this moment and that we can only be to others what we are first to ourselves. And the first thing we got to say ourselves is, I am what? Fine, fierce, and fabulous. Say it again. Fine, fierce, and fabulous. That's how powerful it is when we awaken to that. Suddenly, everybody begins to respond differently. We've re-imaged ourselves. We see ourselves as powerful in this world. 
We see ourselves as the light for the world. To see this illumination flowing in and through us of awareness, this wonderful power of illumination of love and grace and mercy, forgiveness, all radiating from our lives, the world begins to see the power and presence of God at work. Today's invitation is simply to wake up to this power that you are. Not as a man or a woman, not as a human, I'm not talking about that, but there's a divine power in you that you are one with. And we shift from the physical limitations of our humanness, shift to the full awareness of our divinity as God within us, working through us. Oh, 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 all of those wonderful elements at work within our lives. And when we do, we kind of set ourselves free from that self-imposed prison that we live in. Many of us have imprisoned ourselves with this constant feeling of limitation. The idea that we look in the physical mirror and all we see is, I'm just a grasshopper. And my problems are my giants. We constantly, and that's a self-imposed prison that we put ourselves in. And it's full of stress and worry and... It's full of doubt and fear. It's full of all kinds of chaos that goes in our hearts and our lives. Why do we stay there? Because the door to that self-imposed prison is wide open. We just have to step out. We step out as we change our thinking, as we change our thoughts, and begin to realize that our reality, our whole world is based on your thinking, your consciousness. What are you aware of? If you're aware that you are a grasshopper, then your reality shares, shapes your whole world as giants around you and your small, insignificant, not so great, timid, and really not that amazing. You see, the Word of God power and presence of God right here and now is asking you to shift and make a difference. You know, make a shift. Make a shift in your whole thinking and your consciousness to see something different because if we believe and think about our world in a limited way, then everything from that will manifest and view from that. I have met so many people who lived in the same community, a community that taught, a, shall we say, a poverty consciousness for all around them was just simply limitation. And one person living in that world embodied that limitation to the extent of saying, I will never have unless I steal, unless I take. And their consciousness manifested in a way that they lived out a life of always trying to take, steal, and rob. And another person living in the same community sees this consciousness in a different way and sees, I see possibility. I don't care about the poverty around me. I see that I can live and move in a world of abundance. And as they do, they move out to the world of success, create their own business, and become successful and giving back to the world around them. You see, it's all in how we think and how we see ourselves. Jesus taught it as he taught about offering the man who gave talents gave out some money as he was leaving town shall we say and said here you take this talent and you take this talent well you take this you take this amount of money and I'll give you this amount of money and I'll give you that amount of money what will you do with it well, the first person thinks you know my consciousness is I live in a world where the master is cruel and suffering and you know what I better bury that talent because Lord help me if I lose that money ooh master gonna whip me Mm -hmm. You can imagine that kind of thinking, that kind of consciousness, you know? Then the next one says, you know what? I believe I can invest. I can do something with this. And prosperity becomes his. And the next one has an even broader perspective, a belief and a consciousness and a way of thinking that says that this can happen. Jesus was teaching us it's all about how you see your world, how you see yourself, how you image yourself, and what you think about yourself that's going to shape and affect your blessing and your prosperity. So when you wake up and say, I'm fine, I'm fierce and I'm fabulous, you set the course right then and there for that prosperity and blessing to be yours. Because the scripture says, as you believe, so shall you receive. Matthew eleven twenty four. 24, I tell you, you can pray for anything. Woo! Do you realize that? Anything? Are you sure it said anything? Is that what the, really what the Bible says is anything? Oh, there's got to be some limitation. Is there not a little asterisk there? It says, but not the following things. 
not on Tuesdays of the fourth week of the last month of the year. You will not receive your blessing. You will not receive anything. Or things that are above $10,000 are not available for you. Or things that are too high priced or, or that you have too much covetousness and desire for. These things will be limited for you. No. There's no asterisk like that. It just says anything. Anything. And if you believe is the clause, you have to believe that this is possible you will receive it and it'll be yours. So as you believe, you'll receive. You believe you're fine, fierce, and fabulous? Whoa, get ready. You're going to receive some fineness, some fierceness, some fabulousness, awakening within you and stirring from you and around you and through you because that's the way God works. I can't emphasize this enough. So as long as you hold this in consciousness, you're going to shape your world. Your world around you will say, my world's fine. My world's fierce. And oh, Lord, my world is fabulous. How beautiful. Amen? Amen. So how important it is for the children of Israel, unfortunately, then bought into these reports. They believed themselves to be powerless. And they did not possess the land, and they didn't go in. And to each of us, so much is promised. Yet the fear that comes to us that it's not possible, that it's not going to work out for us, is what occupies our consciousness and hinders us possessing our promised land, our blessings, our prosperity, our goodness. There's a scripture that says to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. Maybe you've heard that, meaning that when we die, we're with, with God, and we think about that in the terms of death. But let me invite you to understand a more spiritual meaning than the literal. To be absent from the physical is to be present with the divine. What it's really teaching for us is that when you let go of the limitations of this body, of the physical consciousness of this world, because we look around and say, this body can only do so much. But with God, all things are possible. Now, with this body, not everything is possible. I'm going to tell you that. I cleaned out my garage, and there were some things, there were some buckets of paint that started to get pretty heavy, and there's a lot of things in there that are just like, okay, this body is not saying that's possible right now, you know? I don't know. I'm pretty tired and weary. So I have to say the body is not going to go forward in saying all things are possible. But with God, all things are possible. You see the big difference? So to be absent from this consciousness of this physical world where we look at only the limitations. We look at our bank account. We go, ooh, it's got limitations there. And then we think about the spiritual realm of prosperity and blessing. And we begin to understand the principle of unexpected income. God working in divine ways of bringing about blessing to our lives, about opening the doors for prosperity and for God knows your need before you even ask. And when we have this kind of consciousness, we make a shift that understands us that the kingdom of heaven is here and now and this possibility of being absent from the physical thinking and being present with the Lord is the divine thinking. I now think, live, and move in ways that I understand... I am fine. I am fierce. I am fabulous. Scripture says you must be born again. We can't emphasize this enough. What is to be born again but is to make a change in your thinking? Born again is to mean to repent. What is to repent? To make a change, right? So you, got to, you were thinking this way. Now you're thinking in a new way. When we understand that whole concept, we get what the Scripture is saying is until you awaken your beliefs, you awaken your consciousness, you awaken your thinking to a new way of thinking and understand that you'll always continue in the same old, same old and make the same old mistakes and repeat the same old uh, outcoming of your life. It's, it's going to happen over. It will sh your world will shape just as it is. Now, here's a beautiful lesson. You all know the story of Daniel in the lion's den. I'm sure you've heard it in years gone by in church services. I've talked about it powerful lesson as we think about Daniel in the lion's den on that day when the king comes to take him and lower him into the pit with the lions. You can imagine the emotion that could be feel, felt by everyone around. Fear. Oh, those hungry beasts are ready to devour Daniel at any moment. But what does Daniel do? Look at that scripture. He's lowered into the den of lions. And he turns his back to them. Why? 
because his attention is not on the problem. You see, you really become fine, fierce, and fabulous when you get your eyes off the problem. And you begin to look towards the light. You look towards those things of the divine. When you move your attention, shape, shift your focus to something different. When a problem comes to you, I want you to sing, oh, shift. Yes, that's right. I said it. Oh, shift. That's what I'm going to do. When there's a problem, I'm going to say, oh, shift. I'm so glad because it'll woke me up to say, I need to make a shift. I need to think differently, don't I? I need to shift my consciousness from away from the attention on the problem I'm going to turn my back to it. I'm going to make that shift. I'm going to make a transition within my life. How about the beautiful lesson in the Old Testament of the widow who had just three drops of oil? Just three. And the prophet comes and asks of her to take that and do something wonderful. The invitation, though, begins as he says, if you'll share this, I want you to go out and collect all the vessels you can all the pitchers, all the containers, all the Tupperware you can find, all the little containers, those little, you know, used over butter dishes that I can't believe it's butter came in. You know, whatever you have, I want you to bring it in because we're going to start filling. And you're going to pour that pitcher with three drops of oil. And she begins to pour. And she begins to pour. And she begins to pour. And she fills up one. She fills up two. She fills up three. She fills up 20. She fills up 100. She fills up every container how and why does this happen because instead of recognizing emptiness or nothingness she recognized the something the fine fierce and fabulousness of the divine at work within and through her as she trusted as she believed as she stepped out in faith you see the fine fierce and fabulous just begins to unfold in beautiful ways within our hearts and our lives think about it three drops of oil in most people's mind you would say oh honey you are limited you are that's all you got honey don't even apply go on home you you, don't even bother with this one three drops of oil is going to be enough for anything yet when we shift focus from nothingness to the something to the amazing to the understanding and when people try to tell you you're not anything amazing or you're not something or you're just full of nothing we really awaken to this understanding of this divinity within us. Then the beautiful thing about it is, the prophet said, collect all this, begin to pour, but as you pour, here's the catch. Go and close the door. Go and close the door. The door is shut off to the senses, is what it says, because here's our big thing. We're so caught up in the physical world around us. We're so caught up in looking in the mirror and trying to define who we are. We're so caught up in everybody's words and and the world around us in the physical realm. But you've got to shut the door to these senses of physical awareness because the world may tell you, you ain't nothing. Oh, but shut the door to that kind of voice. Close that off. Close that off to the sense and, and shut it off completely because those senses would want to empty you, drain you. That you find those senses that are speaking constantly of your problems and your issues. Take your attention away from the evidence of these senses and begin to feel the joy. And here's, whoa, the beautiful thing. That joy is symbolized by the oil. You look in the scriptures over and over again. It talks about the oil of joy. She had three drops of oil. And when you pour it out with joy, when you begin to pour that oil out with joy, when you pour out your expectation with joy, when you pour out your faith with joy, when you pour out all of this with joy, when you pour yourself out with joy, the miraculous begins to unfold for you, in you, and through you in such powerful ways. Now, when fear or doubt is gone, you too will empty measures of your life and will have abundance running over through you. What am I sharing today? I want to conclude with this. Take to heart... The Bible is speaking to you here and now, this moment. When you're questioning, do I deserve this job? Do I deserve this blessing? Do I deserve this prosperity? Do I really deserve to live in this way? Shouldn't I be suffering more? Oh, wouldn't I be a better Christian if I left everything and went to outer Mongolia and served as a missionary in China? And I don't want to do that. But wouldn't I be better if I did that, if I sacrificed, if I suffered some way? Wouldn't I be better if I cried out in in poverty? Wouldn't I be, what? 
It's time to shift this kind of consciousness of martyrdom and awaken to our intended blessing as the child of God. Awaken to the truth. Say it with me. I am fine, fierce, and fabulous. Amen.